Welcome back to Handmade with Holly. My name is Holly Michelson, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Delmar, New York. I am so stoked to show you today's project, like seriously very excited. Um, in today's project, we're gonna learn how to make this gorgeous faux alcohol ink paper. I've got a couple of gorgeous samples there for you. I'm gonna teach you how to make this designer series paper yourself. And I'm also gonna teach you this fun fold to make this double Z fold card. Um, and it's called a double Z because you have the Z of the card fold and then you have the second Z that's used to make the extra panel for this sentiment. Um, so I'm really excited to teach you this faux alcohol ink technique and how to make this fun fold. And I think that the end result is just a whopper of a wow card. You'll want to be sure that you stay with me all the way to the end because I have two more fabulous, and when I say fabulous, I mean fabulous, samples that I'm going to show you using two other stamp sets. Now before we get started, just a little housekeeping reminder. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please click on the subscribe button. And then you'll also want to click on the bell. The bell will ensure you're notified each time I upload a new video. Um, and of course, I always love to get comments and feedback from you. So if you like the projects or if you have a favorite one, again, by the end, I'll have three samples for you. Then you can let me know which one you like the best. Um, let's go ahead and talk about what we need to get started for today. Um, we're going to need two pieces of cardstock. We're going to use a full size sheet of balmy blue and a full size sheet of basic white. I'm also going to use the scalloped contours dies and I use this die right here from the set. And we're going to be using the Hydrangea Haven stamp set and the coordinating dies. So I have a few of those dies already pulled out on my work surface. Uh, there's another one. Um, so if you don't have this bundle, I'm gonna call this one a must have. This is simply a stunning stamp set. Uh, not only do you get this gorgeous focal image of the hydrangea, but you also get a separate leaf stamp so that you can color in the leaf and you get a separate hydrangea bloom stamp so that you can color in the hydrangea. You've also got these additional leaves, additional little hydrangea petals that you can add on and a lot of fabulous sentiments. Um, in fact, the sentiments shown on this case are reduced in size because there's so many they couldn't fit them all in the front cover. So like, there's a tiny thank you, I love you, congrats for you, with love. Um, those are a little bit bigger in person. Um, and even this You Make Me Smile, you can see is much larger than what it shows on the cover because this stamp set is simply jam-packed with goodness. Um, also, if we're looking at the dies, there's a lot of really great dies in here. Uh, these are extra parts from a prior project. Um, this die, for instance, allows you to cut out a whole bunch of hydrangea petals that you could add on three-dimensional. And you also have additional leaves that you could use to cut out and layer your leaves. Instead of just stamping them, you could layer the veining onto the leaves. Plus you've got this great tag and this great sentiment label. Um, really, really fabulous set. We're also going to be using the artistically inked set. And you've seen me demonstrate this stamp set before, but today we're gonna focus on this alcohol ink splotch. Um, and this splotch is the basis for how I made this gorgeous paper. So let's talk about additional supplies we need. Um, you're going to need your bone folder and your paper snips. You'll want your take your pick tool and some stamp and seal. And you're also going to want some glue dots 
And I've got the open weave fresh Frasier ribbon here that I'm gonna use to embellish the card. And I also have some pastel pearls. If you don't have the same pearls or the same ribbon, don't fret. Find something that you have that coordinates um, and you'll be able to make a lovely card. I'm also going to be using these four ink pads. I'll be using Balmy Blue, Granny Apple Green, Highland Heather, and Fresh Frasia. This is an incredibly gorgeous ink color combination. I am a raving fan of these four colors together. So alcohol ink has been all the rage since the new annual catalog started back in May, partly because of this phenomenal stamp set with these gorgeous alcohol ink images. Also fueling some of the frenzy around alcohol ink is the new designer series paper by Stampin' Up! called Expressions in Ink. And you can see on one side of the paper, we have these gorgeous patterns that are meant to look like alcohol ink. So Stampin' Up's designers actually did the alcohol ink technique and then that was photographed to create these gorgeous papers. On the reverse side, they also have all of this gold veining that is added into the paper. This paper is exquisite. Um, but if you don't have this paper, not to fear, again, you're gonna be able to make some faux alcohol ink paper of your own where you will be able to control the color selection of your paper. And this is a quick and easy, no fuss project, unlike the real process. I love that and it's a lot of fun, but I don't always have the time or the patience to do that and this is a great way that that I can quickly get my own alcohol ink paper in any color I want. The June Paper Pumpkin Expressions in Color was also designed to look like alcohol ink. And so continuing along with this awesome trend, I thought I would show you how to make your own faux alcohol ink paper. And we're just gonna use that stamp right there. This sheet of paper features three colors. I used Balmy Blue, Highland Heather, and Fresh Frasia. This sheet of paper is two colors. I used Polish Pink and the same Fresh Frasia. Both of these are new in colors that were just introduced back in May. So before I show you how to stamp this though, let's go ahead and start with our measurements because I need to get to the point where I have a piece of paper that's this size. We're gonna start off with a standard piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock, And I'm using Balmy Blue for my card base. So we're gonna cut the balmy blue, and don't worry about dimensions. I will put all the information in the comments. We're gonna open our extension arm and cut the paper to seven and a half. And this piece of paper is extra. You can set it aside and save it for another day. Now that I've cut my paper down to seven and a half by eight and a half, I'm gonna go ahead and score the paper. I'm gonna score the paper at the halfway mark, which is four and a quarter. So this is standard center for a card base. And I'm also going to score it again at two and an eighth. And I need to do this for my Z fold. Okay, so this kind of looks a little weird. It's, it's too large for the card, right? So we're gonna cut it down one more time, and now that we've done our scoring, we're gonna cut the card at two inches, and that is gonna help us make this center strip here. Um, but by scoring first, I save myself the effort of having to score twice. So now this probably looks a lot more familiar to you, the two pieces, right? Okay, we'll set the trimmer aside for a few minutes. We'll need that again. 
and I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm going to burnish my cardstock. Now let's think about that. So this piece of paper is going to go here. So I have made a mountain fold and now I'm going to fold this back in the other direction and make a valley fold. So you can see how that is going to go on the card like that. Okay. And now for the card base, I'm going to fold it in the center, just like I would a normal card base. This looks just like a normal A2 card. And now I'm going to fold it back here on the two and an eighth score mark so that I can create my Z. If you're not familiar with a Z fold card, I have a great video on my YouTube channel where I made these two cards using prized peony and painted poppies to show you how to make a standard Z fold card. Today, we're gonna take this up a notch by adding this second panel and turning it into a double Z fold. I'm gonna go ahead and set these aside now. We're not gonna need them for a little while. Now the next piece is where we need to go ahead and cut our white card stock. I have created this great template for you. It will be available for download in the description. And so um, don't worry about frantically writing down all the measurements. Just follow along and pay attention to what I'm doing and you'll be able to get this template. I will say that the template is not 100% perfect to scale. I did it on the computer. This is my first time making a template and I didn't know how to get it exactly to scale, but it will give you an idea of the shape of the pieces and the exact dimensions are listed everywhere on there. Um, so you should be able to follow along. Okay, we're gonna start with a piece of paper that is horizontal in orientation, and we're going to cut it at seven inches. You'll notice that this paper is still white, and that is because we do need some white pieces for our card, and we're also gonna need some clean card stock to make our flower and our sentiment label. So when I cut that at seven, it leaves me with a chunk of paper like this. Go ahead and set it to the side. We'll be using that for the hydrangea and for the sentiment label. And then we're gonna rotate the remaining piece of cardstock and we're gonna cut this at seven and three quarters. And when I do that, it's gonna make this small scrap this is actually scrap. So if we look at our template, we've cut off this section and now we've just cut off this piece. And that's actually scrap that we are, that you could use to make a sentiment for another card. This would work perfectly. The banners pick a punch and you could insert it in here and make yourself a sentiment label. Now, after we've cut it at seven and three quarters, we're gonna keep the paper facing in the same direction, but now we're gonna cut it at five and seven eighths. So that's just two tick marks before the end. And when we cut it at five and seven eighths, we're gonna get this piece. <clears throat> so again, looking at our template, that's this right here. And go ahead and set the bigger piece aside for just a moment. And we're gonna take this piece that was oriented vertically and we're gonna rotate it horizontally and we're gonna cut it at one and three quarters. Okay. And now we've just made this piece right here and this piece right here for the inside of our card. Now that we've cut off all the pieces that need to remain white, we have our chunk that we're gonna use for this, we have our inside panel pieces, it's time for us to go ahead and stamp our faux alcohol paper. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a scrap piece of paper, and there's no re real reason to do that other than the fact that I wanna keep my grid paper fairly clean for the video. And uh, if I did this project on my grid paper, it's gonna make it pretty messy. 
All right, so we're gonna start off with the lightest tone and we're gonna take our ink blotch stamp from the Artistically Ink stamp set. And I'm just gonna go ahead and ink up my stamp and I'm gonna start to randomly and haphazardly stamp all around the paper. You'll notice that I'm rotating the stamp um, and I'm also deliberately making sure that I'm getting off the edges of the paper so that it looks haphazard. Um, if you don't want to rotate the stamp, maybe you have arthritis or trouble with your wrist, you could also be sure to keep the stamp the same but be rotating the paper. That would be another uh, viable technique as well. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And then since there's still some ink on here, I'm just gonna go ahead and do a few little lighter impressions and get some excess ink off the paper. And then I'm gonna come in with my Stampin' Chamois and clean off my stamp. Now, if you don't have a Stampin' Chamois, this is a really great way to clean your stamps. It's a very thick piece of chamois cloth and when it's wet, it's super pliable. I keep mine stored in an empty stamp case. And this is just a great way to clean your stamps right at your work surface without having to run to the sink. Uh, and my Stampin' Chamois, I can wet it, I can drench it in the sink, and it usually stays wet for a couple of weeks in the sealed case, and then I wet it again as it starts to stiffen. Now the next step is that we're going to do our balmy blue. And so we're gonna, this is our middle tone. And we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing where we're just going to randomly and haphazardly stamp again. We're doing this in areas where we see less fresh phrasia, trying to fill in some of those white spots. And if you prefer, again, you could rotate the paper instead of rotating the stamp. Um, the main thing is you're trying to keep it so the splotches aren't all facing in the same direction and that the paper does not look super uniform. So again, just gonna clean off excess ink on the paper. Um, I wouldn't do that with other projects because this paper is about random splotches. I think it's fine to do that with this project. And I'm gonna make sure I clean off my stamp again. You wanna clean your stamp every time in between changing colors. Finally, we're gonna come in with the darkest tone and this is Highland Heather. And I'm gonna come in and stamp, especially looking for places where I see white, um, but probably being less generous with, with the Highland Heather. This is a darker tone and so it will definitely darken up the paper if I do that. So um, that's part of why I started with the lightest tone. When I started with the lightest tone, you have a tendency, I think, psychologically to do the most stamping with whichever ink you use first. So by doing that fresh phrasia, the lightest tone first, I really got a lot of a base layer since the balmy blue and the Highland Heather can kind of overtake that a little bit. Um, if we bring in, this is the one we freshly stamped. If we bring in, see how nice that was to get rid of the scrap and suddenly have a clean work surface again. Um, if we bring in a scrap that I did before that I showed you earlier compared to the one that I did now, you can see that these colors are a little bit lighter and these colors are a little bit deeper. Um, and that's because the Highland Heather is not fully dry yet. Uh, even the balmy blue is gonna dry just a little bit lighter. But you'll see these are the true colors that ultimately when the ink is fully dry it will look like. And this is more freshly stamped, just slightly deeper tones. But even now that I've been talking for a minute or so, they're getting closer and closer to each other. So while we're looking at faux alcohol ink paper, I wanted to show you a few other samples. This one here is a combination of pale papaya and soft sea foam. This is the one we just did. Um, this is the polished pink and fresh freesia. This one is actually Calypso coral, soft sea foam and pale papaya. So in other words, it's this same combination with 
Calypso Coral added on top for some extra oomph. I thought that would maybe make some nice fall things. Um, and then here's another one. They used Fresh Frasia, Polished Pink, Pale Papaya, and Soft Succulent. And this also made a really beautiful combination. Um, these are some scraps I have left over on my desk for some other projects. All right, so now that we have our piece of stamp paper, we're gonna finish the process of cutting from our template. So we cut this part off, we cut that off, we cut these, and now we're down to this part of the template. So now we're gonna go ahead and cut the last pieces for our card. And we're gonna go ahead now and position the paper in portrait mode. So portrait mode means it's taller than it is wide. And we're gonna go ahead and cut this paper at four inches. And then I'm gonna set this aside for just a moment. I'm gonna take the piece that I just cut off and I'm gonna rotate it and I'm gonna cut it at one and three quarters. And this is going to make my piece for right here and my piece for right here. Now I'm left with this piece and I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it and cut it at one and three quarters. And that gives me my horizontal piece for right here and leaves me with my final piece the piece for the back. And again, you'll have this template to use to follow along. Let's go ahead and finish our card. Now, if you recall, I have my balmy blue card base and then I have those pieces that we just worked to cut. We're going to take our back panel and put some adhesive on it. I'm using stamp and seal. Okay, I'm gonna place this down. And you're just gonna visually align that to leave a nice border around all four sides. I'm also gonna take the longer piece. Remember we have a longer one and a shorter one. I'm gonna take the longer piece and put my stamp and seal on this. And I'm gonna put this down right here. Now with the shorter piece, I'm gonna go ahead and attach that onto this horizontal piece. And then I'm going to do the same with the smallest rectangle. I'm gonna go ahead and put this here. Now when I do that, I'm gonna take a little care to try to align the second piece with the first one so that I have a nice straight line right here. And then I'm gonna come in and stamp my sentiment and place it here. In the interest of time, I already stamped one. Um, I knew we would be spending a lot of time on both the faux alcohol ink technique as well as all the cutting. So I tried to put some pieces together in advance. Um, but this sentiment says, you are capable of amazing things came out of the Hydrangea Haven stamp set. Um, you'll notice on the first card I did, I appreciate all the little things you do. This time I mixed it up and I used, you are capable of amazing things. Um, so that's now that part of the Z. We also need to attach our white piece. Sometimes I have a little trouble getting my seal started and when that happens, I just use my thumb to get it started. I'm just trying to align my paper with the other edges. Uh, you can see 
it would have been smarter actually if I had done this panel, then this panel, then this panel. Didn't do a perfect job of alignment. So that would be my tip for next time is go right to left, do the big one and then the smaller ones, or you could go left to right, but I would do them in order so that you can align the top and the bottom edge like I did not do. Okay, so now we have our Z fold and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put adhesive on this, but I want you to make sure that you're only putting adhesive over here where it's gonna attach on the left side and on this last square where it's gonna attach on the right. Do not put any adhesive here. Do not put any adhesive here um, because as the card opens and moves, you want that to pop up. And so no adhesive in those middle areas. All right, so now I'm just gonna kind of decide where I would like it. I'm gonna put it not quite exactly in the middle. I think things look nice when they're a little bit asymmetrical. And then I'm going to adhere it down on the right. And then let's give it a fold. There's our double Z. And now we're gonna come in and add the hydrangea. So. Again, I did some things in advance to save us some time. I die cut this sentiment using the scallop contours die. And I stamped the sentiment from Hydrangea Haven to an incredible woman using Highland Heather. Oh, and I should have mentioned that this one was Fresh Frasia. I used this stamp with Granny Apple Green and I stamped it on a piece of white cardstock. I didn't worry about getting the hydrangea flower. I knew that um, I was gonna be making it in a purple. I also then went over that those leaves using a second stamp, again, granny apple green, and I colored in those stamps. If I wanted to differentiate the color a little bit, I could have stamped this off once and made the inside of the leaves a second generation green. I kind of liked it the way it was though, and I did it full strength. I cut out a piece of Highland Heather cardstock using the top part of the die. I also used the die to cut out the leaves. So then I worked on my hydrangea blossom. Um, what I did was I used, I used this die to cut out the flower bud. That left me a little bit of extra and I just trimmed the stem off with my snips. And then I used this other die to cut a piece of hydrangea blossom from the basic white. I wanted to try to get a tonal effect on my hydrangea. So what I did was I came in with Fresh Frasia and Highland Heather, and I used a sponge dauber to add color to my blossom. Now you could also do this with the blending brushes. I chose to use the daubers both because this is a small work surface, but also because I knew I was going to be continually switching back and forth between two different purples. And I typically use one blender brush for all my purples. So in the event that the ink was wet, I didn't want to cross contaminate my ink pads. And now I'm switching to my Highland Heather Dauber and I'm adding some more color. The first time I kind of rubbed to get full base coverage. Now I'm pouncing and trying to just get darker color in some areas, but not all. Um, and depending on how much I do, will determine how dark this is. So you can kind of see what I did there to work my blossom. The die actually cuts out each individual hydrangea petal. So I have the opportunity 
to kind of pop these up. I'm just using my take your pick tool to push these out so that I get some dimension to my flower. And I'm doing this first before I add adhesive and hopefully that way I won't get a lot of adhesive on the petals themselves. And then in the future, the petals will kind of stay popped up. Okay, so I have this scrap of retired sweet sugar plum that I grabbed out of my scrap bin. Um, I didn't have any more Highland Heather scraps and I didn't want to cut a whole eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper for just this. Um, it won't matter though because it's going to be behind the flower and it's really just kind of peeking through lending a little bit of a purpley hue and honestly it, it goes pretty well with the fresh freesia. So I'm gonna be a cheat and use my scraps. Now I'm going to come in with my silicone craft mat and I'm going to put a little bit of Tombow multi-purpose glue or, or what we call green glue on my craft mat and then I'm just going to come in with a craft sponge and dab that and I'm going to put it on this flower. And what I'm trying to do is make this stick together without sticking every one of those flower petals down. Um, I, want, I want them to still pop up and have some dimension. Um, then the tricky thing is, is you need to line your hydrangea up, uh, but luckily the flower petals kind of poke out in ways that make it obvious which way to layer that. I'm just sort of carefully using my fingers to press that down so that I'm not pressing all my little flower petals down. Now I'm going to go ahead and mount my flower onto the stem. So I'm going to put seal right on here. I'm doing this on the craft mat so when I get excess it doesn't get on my work surface. I can just, you can see that just rolls right off the craft mat. Um, and that'll work with seal, the Tombow liquid glue like we just used over here, uh, hot glue guns, they'll all peel right off this silicone craft sheet. There we go. Now I have my blossom attached to the stem. Save this one for another day. And I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this down. I find it easier when you have odd shaped pieces to use the sponge glue method. I could use dimensionals here and I did consider it, but I deliberately decided not to because this card has a fair amount of heft and bulk as it is because of the extra layers like right here, you're four layers deep. So when I add the flower there, that if I put that up with dimensionals, that's going to add even more dimension, um, which we may not want if we're mailing it. And then in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and put some Tombow right on the back of that sentiment. And I'm gonna come in and position this. Now, one thing I should have done was I should have stamped my sentiment a little further to the right. That would have given me a little bit more room for positioning this. Um, so that's a tip for you is think about stamping that sentiment not in the center of the label, but a bit on to the right. There we go. And we also want to keep our, our bloom on this left side so that we don't have any glue. Uh, another tip would be to make sure when you're putting glue on the bloom that maybe you don't put any glue toward the right side of that bloom so that if it hangs over, 
you don't have any exposed adhesive. So there you have it. That is our Z Fold card. Um, on the back, you could add a panel and, and you could uh, write a message on that, maybe stamp another hydrangea if you like. But this is a gorgeous card for an incredible woman. If we wanna embellish the card a little bit more, then we're gonna go ahead and make a bow. This is that Fresh Frasia Open Weave Ribbon. So sometimes you really have to fuss with your bow to get it just how you want it. Go ahead and snip that off the roll. I'm going to go ahead and use a glue dot to attach this to my project where the blossom meets the stem. For the sake of time, I'm going to skip the step of adding the pearls. I'm sure you know how to add pearls to your project. Um, but I did promise you that I had two alternate versions, and so I want to bring those in and show you those before you head out. So uh, we use the Artistically Ink Set, this stamp, to make our faux alcohol paper. So I also wanted to make a card using this stamp set. And so I use this stamp set to make this gorgeous card. It's got another extra flower on the inside, um, which I just love that little surprise when you open it up. And this one says best wishes. I intend to use this as a wedding card. Um, just love this. I love the polished pink and the fresh freesia against the black. And here I used just jade cardstock and I pulled that from this gorgeous leaf die that comes included with the stamp set. So there's another awesome idea for you. And then my third idea is this one, and it comes from the Sweet as a Peach stamp set. So the colors here are pale papaya and sea, soft sea foam, and I just stamped a couple of peaches. This says, your as, and when you open it up, sweet as a peach. Um, and in order to make this card, I used this leaf, set um, and these mini peaches which is great when you use this die you can cut three mini peaches all at once um, and there are coordinating stamps for that uh, you can see the leaf stamps here and the peach stamps there and there's also this really great die that makes these little flowers that I cut out in a scrap of balmy blue. And honestly, that was a little scrap left over from the cuttings related to that card. And I just turned them into these little blue flowers. Um, and then of course, there's a die to cut out the main peach and the peach leaves. And I used this little sentiment label to cut out the your as. Um, the ink colors here are pale papaya as a base layer and then I sponge daubed some Calypso coral. This is Calypso coral and the leaves are done in granny apple green. So there you have it, three awesome projects using this faux alcohol paper technique. Got a few other color ideas there of things I also did with this faux paper technique. These cards are just incredible. I am so very excited about them. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps me with YouTube. And please be sure that you're subscribed to my channel and that you've clicked on the notification bell so that you're notified each time I upload a new video. Again, all the directions will be included in the comments below. I will have a link for you to be able to download the template that you need for cutting. And if you're interested in purchasing any of these products, the Sweet as a Peach Bundle, 
the Artistically Inked Bundle, Hydrangea Haven, or any of the other great supplies that I use today, please visit my online store. I would really appreciate your business. I look forward to stamping with you again. Until the next time. Thank you.